Let's bring in our independent uh, MP Dai Li uh, for some instant reaction on the extraordinary protests going on in Canberra at Parliament House as we speak. Dai Li, what do you make of it? Uh, look, I, I think I concur with uh, what just Kieran Drew said. It's kind of very irrational um, trying to hear what they're saying. I mean, I was shocked. I mean, I came here to to be prepared to talk on your program about cost of living and um, I was told that there's this protest happening outside. Um, I think it's correct. Like, I think security, first of all, like, how did that happen? Um, and that will be, you know, looked into, I have no doubt. Um, uh, but one of the things I picked up on what the the, the, the gentleman was saying was around free, we, we're not free or something. Until and I thought to myself, we're actually free. free. Or yeah, they wouldn't be able are, to do this. Look, you know, he's free. <laughs> exactly. Uh, as, and as you mentioned to uh, Cheng Lei, that, you know, we are living in a very free and democratic society to enable them to protest and do what they do. So we are definitely living in a very free and democratic society. Um, and that's something that we need to really, uh, you know, appreciate and really protect the ability to uh, protest. Look, you know, um, Do you think this is somehow related the, to you know, Senator Fatima Payman? Look, I have no doubt. Uh, there's many things. I mean, when protesters protest, I mean, I don't know what triggers them to protest. Uh, at the end of the day, for me, I, you know, for as a member of parliament, my focus obviously is on my community. And there are some in the community are, are concerned with um, the whole humanitarian aid that's not going into, uh, into Gaza. Um, but at the same time, we also understand Yesterday, Josh Byrne, the member for, um, I think, McNamara, did a said a very beautiful speech in terms of him being a, of, of Jewish heritage and that, you know, his family has gone through a lot and how he needed, you know, that, that he wanted to see peace for both sides. Uh, and really, at the end of the day, um, you know, we, we support a two-state solution and I supported the government for the two-state solution. And we also, you know, uh, called out the, the, the horrific, um, you know, killings on October the 7th um, and that the hostages have to be released. That is definitely something that, as a parliament, we have called for. At the same time, we've also asked for Israel to, uh, you know, abide by international, uh, you know, r laws and rules uh, and, and allow for aid in the killings of innocent yeah. lives, women and children. Uh, and as a, somebody who escaped, <laughs> I sit in her watch, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, it reminded me so much of the time when we had to, you know, uh, we fled Vietnam, Vietnam uh, for, 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 yeah, um, from from because of the war. So I think that the the issues are, are quite complex uh, over there in the Middle East. Um, as Australian, we can only do so much. Uh, Australia as a country has provided a safe haven for many families and count hundreds of thousands of refugees like myself who've come to call Australia home, and we escaped those. Um, those tyrannical regimes for that particular reason because we don't want to bring it here to Australia. So therefore, I think I just remind people that, yes, we are touched and moved by what's happening in the Middle East. But it's really, is that within our control? Yes. What is within our control? What can we do? Um, and, um, you know, it, it's just, to me, it doesn't really contribute to a very constructive conversation, uh, an international issue that really, uh, that would have to have international leaders and the world have to come together to solve, um, you know, what's happening in the Middle East. 